Good morning. Welcome to this talk on surface velocity and free surface aeration in a large prototype through in operation. My name is Hubert Johnson and I'm based at the University of Queensland in Brisbane, Australia. As we start this talk, one may ask how many people have seen physically a large spillway in operation in their life? And then one may ask another question, how many people have performed physically some field measurement during a large spillway operation? And the number for the second question will be very small. This brings us to the context of this talk, which is really a recognition by our society of the hydrological and hydrologic extreme that our planet is facing. If we use Australia as an example, there are hot temperatures on multi-year long droughts. And on the other hand, extreme rainfall associated with intense surface runoff on massive floods. Thus, water security and flood protection have become the most relevant to our society within its growing population. And one of the, the most efficient means to provide both water security and flood protection are dams and reservoirs. Dams, which must be equipped with a spillway to pass safely the flood waters above, below, around or within the dam, with two key roles, safe conveyance and safe energy dissipation. Yet, what do we know really about prototype spillway operation beyond visual qualitative observation or physical modeling in small size facilities? I will present you some work which was undertaken at the Chinchilla Minimum Energy Loss Weir in Australia. Here is a Chinchilla Weir in operation on the 27th of November, 2022 for a discharge of 121 cubic meter per second. The Chinchilla Weir was completed in 1973 for irrigation water supply. It is located about 500 kilometers west of Brisbane, along the Kordaman River, with a very large catchment area on a large reservoir capacity, and it is listed as a large dam by Uncold and Uncold. The spillway is a smooth converging chute with a design discharge of 850 cubic meters per second for bank full. This viewing elevation highlight the spillway chute design which was based basically upon irritational flow motion of alleol fluid using the method of small squares. In November-December 2021, this structure experienced a major flood. On this graph show, in dotted lines ahead above Christ, on red, the discharge hydrograph during the event. During this flood event, the discharge exceeded by nearly 230% the design discharge. On the headwater and tailwater elevation, I illustrate on this graph with the vertical axis between in meter AHD for Australian high datum. The headwater varied within about three meters, but the tailwater elevation varied within 12 meters. This maximum headwater level and tailwater level may be compared with four major floods that took place at the beginning of 2022. Simply, the Kondaman River at Chinchilla experienced five major floods in less than six months between the end of 2021 and May 2022. I'm going to show you some photographs taken on the 3rd of December 2021, two days before the peak of the flood, on the 5th of December 2021, at the peak of the flood. This photograph was taken in December, on the 3rd of December 2021. Looking downstream, we can see the we in the background. And as we look closer, we see the smooth inflow toward the speedway crest, the accelerating flow on the hydraulic jump located on the sheet itself, within the background, the road. There's two photographs taken at the peak of the flood on the 5th of December, show the headwater in the background and the tailwater in the foreground. This photograph 
were taken from the car park next to the weir. On at the time of that photograph, there were nearly three meters of water. Here is a photograph of my own car when I came back on the 15th of December. And of course, I could not observe the flood at the peak, at the, at the flood at the peak because my car was not amphibious. This movies highlight the self aeration down the spillway chute. Photograph taken or video, sorry, taken on the 15th of December. We see the granular, rough free surface on upstream the glassy free surface. Aeration was also observed in at the toe of the chute in the hydraulic jump. Here we see the air entrainment in the hydraulic jump with an inflow fraud number about 6.5. One of the fascinating observations during this field observation were the inception of self aeration with at the upstream end, a non aerated flow region, and further downstream, a self aerated flow region. With a progressive transition in water surface roughness from a smooth and glassy surface to a rough, coarse sandpaper appearance next to the inception region on a very rough, choppy surface in the self aerated flow. And the self aerated flow was characterized by beige waters, evidence of a mix between air, water, and sediments, a three phase flow. Quite markedly different from what is observed on a steep chute. Example of inception of self aeration on a steep chute on the right, compared to observation at the Chinchilla Weir on the left. Further, surface velocity measurements were performed using an optical technique. With on the left, the setup using a sturdy cinematographic tripod on a camera equipped with long lens, 300 mm to 450 mm. The focus was on the left spillway bay. On the right, picture illustrates a typical field of view of the camera. In the center of the spillway bay, the blue line shows the surface velocity, optical surface velocity, as a function of the vertical axis in meter HD, and the surface velocity being measured parallel to the inverse. The surface velocity data are compared with the backwater calculation for a smooth converging chute, and with the ideal fluid flow calculation green curve. On the same graph, we can see also the standard deviation of the streamwise velocity, Vs prime, and the standard deviation of the transverse velocity, Vt prime. Altogether, the data provided fascinating two-dimensional surface velocity field in the self aerated flow region, with very poor data quality in the non aerated flow because of the surface glare. An example of a typical surface velocity contour map is shown here. We found the right a photograph highlighting uh, the relevant uh, pictures. The data on here, we are looking at nearly 18,000 frame being analyzed. On fast size, an accelerating flow from the inception right to the toe of the chute, with some location of high velocity on some location of low, higher on lower velocity at the same elevation. With any optical technique, the validation is a very important stage, and it's not trivial, particularly when there is no independent field validation data sets. Here, in this work, we validated the optical technique against the backwater equation in terms of the time average surface velocity in the field and against dual tip phase detection probe in a laboratory based upon a fraud scaling. The data at Chinchilla we highlighted very high streamwise turbulence intensity between 170% and 210%. Results, which were close to prototype observation in the Hins Dam step spillway, and to phase detection probe data in large spillway model at the University of Queensland. The same data, Chinchilla highlighted surface turbulence anisotropy with a ratio of transverse to streamwise turbulence intensity about 6 to 10%. Result again close to prototype observation at the Heinstein. 
In conclusion, the chinchilla minimalist way is characterized by a smooth converging spillway shoot. Field observation were conducted at the beginning and at the end of a major flood event in November-December 2021. The inception of self-aeration highlighted some contrasti contra contrasting differences sorry, between flat and steep slopes. While the surface velocity field highlighted a three-dimensional velocity with implication in terms of kinetic energy dissipation when there are region of high velocity and region of low velocity as observed at Chinchilla Weir. Ultimately, one needs to keep in mind that while optical techniques are fascinating because we need field observation, they are not easy and it's not trivial to use them. Thank you very much.